Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So hit subscribe if you'd like to join the fun and paint along. Hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. Okay, so we are fast approaching Valentine's Day and this week I have an update of a painting that I've had in my teaching arsenal for quite a few years, but I had a vision uh, to do a tic-tac-toe version of my Rustic Heart painting. So I present to everybody this week tic-tac-toe Valentine. This painting is going to be so easy, so fun. Uh, you guys are going to love it. So I'm using my three standard brushes as per usual. I have a large square flat wash brush. It's a one inch size. I have a medium size pointed brush here and then a small detail brush. I'm gonna get those brushes in my water cup off the screen. If you need to see a materials list of everything that you'll need to paint along, check the description box below for that. It'll bring you to my materials page and show you everything that you need. For this painting, we're going to use the following colors for the background to get started. So I have black and white. I'm going to create a brown today. Uh, so I believe in my original Rustic Heart painting, I just use a brown right out of the bottle and you can definitely use that, but I'm going to mix brown today with orange, blue, and yellow. And then I have a little bit of my favorite color, phthalo green right there as well. And that is actually what I'm going to start with in the center of my canvas here is that phthalo green and a little bit of white with my big brush. Okay, so gorgeous teal color. I'm going to just take a little bit of white and mix that into my beautiful green, my favorite blue green teal color. And I'm gonna go right in the center of my canvas here with that gorgeous color. Now for me, that feels a little, just a tiny bit too dark. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of white just right on my brush and just kind of add that in there. That also adds a little bit of nice uh, texture that, so it's not just so solid green so got a little bit of that white in there as well just kind of mixing it up getting some good texture in there so just dead center there with that green i'm gonna go a little bit further out okay and just a little bit of water always in that paint helps it go nice and smooth and soak into that canvas texture. Okay, just pulling the paint just a tiny bit out. And now I'm going to mix up my brown. So I'm going to rinse my brush for that. Gonna dry it off a little bit, just get the most, most of the green out of it. It's okay, there's a little bit still though. And now to create brown, uh, we're going to go across the color wheel. So the way that I like to do that is by kind of starting with orange and then neutralizing it with blue. So that's what's gonna create our brown color. So just a little bit of blue into that orange and you can already see that begin to create a nice, uh, very orange-ish <laughs> uh, brown. So to neutralize that a little bit, I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow. Then we're gonna kind of move more in the beige direction. And then we're gonna tone it down just a little bit too with some black and white. There we go. We'll get a nice neutral brown, just like so. That's good color mixing practice. But again, if that is a struggle, there is absolutely no shame in just using brown ready to go right out of the bottle. Okay, but I'm gonna take now this brown and I'm going to go all the way around the green that I created. What I like to do is kind of put some paint all around first. And then I'm gonna come back and sort of blend those two colors together. So we're creating a nice rustic background here. And this is probably the scariest step <laughs> because you wanna make sure that you actually blend your colors together. So you don't wanna stop at this part, you know, and let there be uh, too harsh of a transition. You wanna then grab a little bit more of that light brown. We're gonna get a lot of different tones here. So a little bit of that light brown mixed in with the light green. And we're going to start to sort of blend the two together. You might end up with a little bit too much paint on your brush. So you can rinse your brush. 
Okay, we're addressing where those colors meet like so and bringing it a little bit further out as well. Now you don't want to go all the way in and lose your blue and in fact I think I went a little bit too heavy-handed with the brown. So that's kind of what's fun about acrylic painting is that it's a play. It's a back and forth layering type thing so you can always add some more color from underneath back on top and help you build up those layers of color. Okay, that's about the look that I'm wanting to get there. So pulling that blue back into that brown so that I have this nice transition. And notice I am working pretty quickly with my colors as well. With acrylic paint, you gotta remember that it dries very quickly. So you do wanna be pretty fast about getting that color all onto the canvas, okay? So again, just pulling that out. Okay, that's looking really good. And I'm gonna rinse my brush again and I'm going to create a much more neutralized brown. Okay, so a toned down brown. Now to create a tone, that means we're adding gray. So gray is black and white. So taking that brown that we have, I might need to make a little bit more. Okay, and then this is gonna be again a darker brown much darker so more like a gray brown okay a lot more black but not all the way to black yet okay so we have this beautiful rustic gray brown perfect we're just going to put that along the outside edges here because so we're creating a frame for ourselves okay like so all the way around keep in my brush Moving nice and quickly. Okay. I'm going all the way around my canvas, not being shy. Just getting that brush going in all different directions and getting it nice and blended. Okay, there we get that nice layering effect of all of those different colors. Okay, you don't want to completely cover that warmer brown. That's looking about right to me. Okay, very pretty. I like it. And I think what I'm going to do also, since it's a little bit darker, my whole composition is just a tiny bit darker than I usually go, which could look really pretty and rustic and there's certainly nothing wrong with it but i think i'm going to rinse my brush and add just a little bit of a lighter brown as well so i'm going to take another little scoop of white and just make a light version of that brown color and just bring a little bit of lightness there we go all around there just so it's not too dark we'll get a nice contrast then of our hearts, okay, and the black frame. Gorgeous, and I think a little bit more blue-green as well. This is your composition, composition, so you can create it however you like. You might be someone that really loves those uh, soft, neutral tones. Myself, I love that teal green, you guys know that. So I'm gonna add just a little pinch more of that green as well and just finish up my background composition okay looking good yeah bringing that blue just a little bit further out really like to have that vibrant blue green in the middle there i just feel like it needs a few more areas oh just some brush strokes of that blue green just to balance everything out. Okay, that looks about right to me. I'm gonna rinse my brush one more time. We've gotten really messy today. <laughs> uh, so this is gonna be the last step before we take a quick break and let everything dry. So now I'm just going to use plain black. Get that loaded up on my brush and I'm very gently with my hand going to just kind of run right over the edge of the canvas here almost as if I'm using like a sponge and I want to get some of that nice texture of the canvas and make a really messy frame. Okay, we don't want a solid black line here. We want 
a rustic frame. Okay, so I'm just kind of throwing my brush across. That's why this is such a fun painting because you really get to go quick and messy with it and you get to feel like an expert <laughs> and not really stress out so much about the details. So in the corners here, I'm just kind of flicking my brush a few times in either direction, just making it look even more rustic. Perfect. Okay, we don't want to go too far in because we want to have enough room for our little tic-tac-toe game in the middle. So just a little bit of that rustic frame. If you're working on a boxed canvas, you're going to want to paint black on the sides of your canvas as well. I've switched to, to the canvas boards to save space in my storage. <laughs> okay, so that looks really good. Let's go ahead and let this layer dry. And then we're going to come back with fresh colors and add a whole bunch more. So I'll see everyone in a few. Okay, welcome back artists. I have a dry background and fresh colors on a new piece of palette paper. All I need for the second half of the painting is red, black, and white. And then I also have fresh water and I cleaned my brushes at break. Okay, let's now create our little tic-tac-toe grid. We're gonna do that with our medium-sized brush. You can also use your small, tiny detail brush if you'd like to have a little bit more control but the brush stroke width that we want is about the width of this brush. So I'm going to use this one and I'm going to just use black. Okay, just black right as it is. Rolling my brush in that paint will help it come to a nice point. Okay, and now I'm going to create my grid and we're gonna want three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine little quadrants. We're gonna do two lines coming down here. Okay, you wanna make sure that you leave enough room on either side here. And very lightly, I'm just gonna come down and create as straight of a line as I can. And I'm gonna go back and fill that in, but I'm also going to have two lines here. So you want that inner quadrant or area here to be about as thick as the other one. So I'm definitely just eyeballing it here. I'm not one for like mathematical precision. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to cut this area kind of remaining in half. And that looks pretty good to me. Okay, so now I'm just going to come back and make those lines a little bit more bold, a little bit more visible uh, by going over them a few times, thickening them up, adding a little bit of water always into my paint to make it go nice and smooth. Now, the harder you press down with your brush, the thicker of a brush stroke you're going to get. Okay, so we're going very light handed here with our brush strokes, like so. But this is also a very loose, sort of rustic painting, so we're not going to worry too much about super straight or all even thickness of lines. We can have some wobbliness and some fun with this. Okay, now let's create our X's. We're going to kind of work with our black first and then give it a second to dry. So the X's I'm going to have right here, right here, down here, and then one diagonal. And I tried this uh, composition a few ways, and I wanted to have the diagonal line of the hearts going through, so as if uh, love wins. <laughs> this is a cute little joke there uh, in a diagonal here. Um, so I was, was careful to have four X's, and then I have five hearts, so as if we won a game there. So I thought this through, you guys, so... If you'd like to copy me, I'm gonna do an X in this box. In this box. Just keeping it simple. We want them about the same size. Down here. And then in the upper corner, like so. Cute, cute, cute. Okay, now I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm gonna do my hearts now. So I'm gonna do pink hearts. You can do whatever color that you'd like. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of white and add that into this kind of pinkish red that I have. I just think that that pink goes really nicely with the green and the brown. Okay, and I'm just gonna create cute little hearts 
in all of the remaining quadrants. And these hearts do not need to be perfect. Okay, again, we're, we're doing a rustic, fun, easy, stylized painting today. So no stressing out, no quest for perfection. Could we, the wonky hearts are adorable. They look even cuter than perfect hearts. You could paint this painting with a loved one and one person could paint the X's and one person could paint the hearts. I think that would be really cute. I have a few more Valentine's Day romantic paintings in store for us as we approach the Valentine's Day holiday. And I'm just filling these hearts in as I go. So using my same brush, if you wanted, you could use your smaller brush to draw the hearts and then come back and fill it in with the medium sized brush, or you could even use your small brush the whole time whatever works for you. Okay, just getting that filled in with that beautiful color. Looking so cute, filling up our whole canvas, addressing the whole composition here. Looking so cute. I just had this little idea to update Rustic Heart with this tic-tac-toe concept and I painted it and I just thought, oh, so cute. <laughs> I really like the colors and just everything about it. So if you're painting along today, I would love to see your work. I've created a Facebook group called the Art Club specifically for my students to share their work, whether it be from painting along with me or from just your own imagination. And you can check the description box below for information on how to join that too. It's a totally free. It's just a Facebook group that anybody can join if you're on Facebook. Okay, and now I'm going to take my clean brush, rinse that brush, and with a little bit of white, I'm going to add some nice texture into these hearts. So the way that I like to do that is do a couple swipes kind of on either side and allow the paint to sort of mix with the pink. And then once I've kind of gotten the majority of the white off of my brush from the first initial swipes, I'm going to add a little bit of kind of lighter pink texture in the heart as well. So this again is not an exact science, but what we're doing is we're just adding a little bit of what looks kind of like 3D texture into each of these hearts. If you go over it, it'll start to blend. Okay, so you can kind of play around a little bit. You can have some that look really 3D and some that just look a little bit more cartoony. Uh, it does not need to be exact by any means because we would have the highlight on the kind of uh, top part here of the heart, but then also sort of in the center parts, if you guys know what I mean. So again, not an exact science, just getting that pretty white on those little hearts like their little puffed 3D hearts. Okay, that looks really cute. If you went too heavy handed anywhere, you can always add, again, some more of that pink color that we started with right underneath. That looks pretty cute to me. Now I'm going to grab my tiny brush and I'm going to outline those hearts with black. Yeah, I'm just gonna be pretty quick about it and I'm not gonna be perfectionistic again. Just going along the outside edge and creating cute little hearts that really makes them pop and makes them look a little bit more kind of cartoon feeling. Looking very cute, nice graceful brush strokes all the way around. You don't need to rush yourself. I know that I am a quick painter. But you also don't need to try to be too perfect about it either. Because we're doing it again. It's rustic. Okay. Very cute. Put a nice little point there at the bottom. Makes them look a little bit more cartoony. I really like that sort of illustrator look. Okay. Almost finished here 
home stretch. Everybody, look at how cute this is looking. Okay, we can kind of refine each shape too as we're doing this outline. Adjusting it and making it look even more whimsical. So cute, okay? And now let's do the arrow that strikes through these three hearts winning the game. I'm going to use my same tiny brush here and I want to kind of visualize where I'm going to go with this line first. So my goal is to go right into this corner right here to right up there. I'm not going to have very much space left up there for my arrow. So I'm going to have a very small arrow. I want to be mindful of that. But I'm going to start from the bottom. I really want to be mindful about getting my angle correct. Okay, so it should be coming from the diagonal point of these little boxes and then all the way to the top part here and just a little pointed arrow there at the top and then here at the bottom a few little brush strokes like it has a little feather tail so cute now i'm going to go back and just kind of thicken up that line now that i have a nice straight line you got to make sure you go through the hearts in the middle that's really what gives it that classic Valentine's heart Cupid struck arrow look. How cute is that? Okay, just a few little tiny steps. Now to finish everything off, uh, I'm now going to add a little bit of white on top of my X's. I think that this kind of just looks nice and pulls everything together and also sort of makes the X's look 3D, like they have a shadow. Uh, so I'm just gonna go right along one side and then right along the other like so so that really gives it like i said a 3d look so i'm just going along the right side here but again not an exact science and then the top there okay very nice like so just right on top of that x and see that one's on the bottom that works too like so and like so okay now i'm going to grab just a little bit of gray if you want i just think this looks kind of interesting too to just add a little bit of gray right along the kind of checkerboard like so just to add another little kind of rustic fun element just like it's a stamp or something Okay, like so. And you can put any other little final touches that you may like to add. And that is all the instruction that I have for everybody today. So let me know what you thought of today's painting in the comments section. I would love to see you over in the art club. And until next time, stay creative.